so hi guys uh, welcome back to an another video uh, today we are launching a new playlist uh, which is about research papers where uh, i'll be covering uh, some of the most impactful and trending research papers in the field of nlp especially okay so this video uh, this is the first of the playlist and here we will be seeing about lora okay which is low rank adaptation at the end of the video i'll show show you the implementation which uh, we have seen already so many times and also uh, i'll show you the research paper as well okay so now let's start with the video okay so what are all the sections we'll be covering from the research paper so we'll be seeing about abstract introduction problem statement and what are the ex existing solution right now uh, i mean right then when the research paper was written and what were the problems then okay and then uh, the lora method which is the crux of the paper obviously and then finally we'll be seeing an important section about understanding the low rank updates okay so this is basically what we'll be seeing um in this video okay so next coming to abstract in abstract uh they have said that uh with the increased uh larger pre-training of models um like you know we have gpt3 where the model is around 175 billion parameters okay that is so huge so these kind of large pre-training results in a bottleneck while fine-tuning okay so fine-tuning is becoming very less feasible because if you have 175 billion parameter model for pre-training you should also again fine-tune all the 175 billion parameters while fine-tuning so that is an important problem uh, which was uh, been trying to solve in this paper okay so what does this lora technique propose is that in lora technique uh, they have proposed that we can freeze the pre-trained weight and we'll be injecting something called trainable rank decomposition matrix okay so you need not worry about the word rank decomposition matrix uh, we'll be seeing that uh, in some subsequent sections okay so for what we'll be uh, injecting uh, trainable rank decomposition matrix is that so that we can reduce the params for fine tuning for downstream task okay so that's why we'll inject this uh, matrices called decomposing uh, decomposition matrices okay next there are some features which have been highlighted for lara in this paper and they are like they have said that there is no additional inference latency why this is called as feature is that um lora is a form of adapter okay so in previous adapter what happened was uh, whatever they tried to do they weren't able to uh, solve the one problem which was having an additional inference latency okay so that is not there here uh, other than that we have higher training throughput and the performance of this lora was on par either on par or else better than a fully fine tuned model okay these were some of the features of lora okay so now coming to the introduction section okay so in introduction section uh, they have discussed about a lot of things and we'll be seeing it uh like you know kind of subtitle wise first first they started with the challenges existing and uh, this was also hinted in abstract where like you know we need to fine-tune all the parameters of the pre-train model and this is making it inconvenient to pre-train that kind of large models okay because if you can pre-train a large model and if you are not able to fine-tune it for some downstream task that doesn't make any sense for you to create such models okay so it became inconvenient that was the main challenge so what was the solution then was a concept called adapters okay so in adapters what they basically done was 
let's say if you have a model maybe gpt3 itself okay what they will do is they will add some additional dense layers or linear layers by freezing the whole parameters at top <coughs> they'll be adding some adapters at the bottom okay but what happened uh, here was the idea is that you need only few parameters for new task okay that's what's the idea for adapters okay in adapters you can just have some few parameters and you can just store update load it for any task specific parameters okay okay uh, so this is in addition with the pre trained model that is also there okay you can't just use the adapters uh, you need the pre trained model along with that we will be having some task specific adapters the problem in adapters was that obviously like i said uh, uh, in previous uh, slide we talked about it right uh, there was an additional inference latency and the main issue was that uh, it wasn't able to match the performance of the fully fine tuned model okay so what is meant by fully fine tuned model uh, well, i will just give a uh, explanation about that even if you might know uh, because uh, fully fine tuned model uh, will be talking about this uh, in lot of uh, slides later okay fully fine tuned model is nothing but you are fine tuning and updating all the weights of all the parameters in the model let's say if it is 175 billion you will be updating all the 175 billion parameters which is your trainable parameters okay so i hope you got an idea of what are the problems and what is the solution okay so now let's talk about the key inspiration these guys have taken from okay so uh, they have cited two papers okay uh, which was one was from uh, <coughs> lee et al which is from a 2018 paper and another one is ag agan jayan okay uh that is in another paper uh sorry if i misspelled it but you can see it in the paper itself okay so from there uh they took a key inspiration okay so what was that i'm just quoting it like it's here okay over parameterized model in fact reside in a low intrinsic dimension okay this was the key inspiration so what it means is that if you have very uh, large uh, models like you know over parameterized uh, is meaning that you have a large model uh, because with increase in params your model size also increases right so in the, such kind of models the models can learn for some downstream task in some low dimensional inputs itself okay uh, let's say if you are having uh, 175 billion parameters uh, model like you know you can just learn it with some smaller dimension model uh, smaller dimension itself smaller dimensional inputs okay so that was the key inspiration but it was not directly applied they made a hypothesis out of it so what was the hypothesis is that the weights get updated right during fine tuning that they have stated that the changes in weight during model adaptation also has a low intrinsic rank keyword is rank okay uh, because uh, this intrinsic rank is the core of lora okay what is intrinsic rank is that uh, what here they mean is that the model weight can be updated with some very less dimensional or else less independent uh, linearly independent vectors okay so dimension uh, it states that we have all the rows okay which say like uh, we have thousand dimension embedding okay uh, it will be saying the thousand rows or else thousand dimension but rank is the rank can be very small like you know 5 10 8 uh, it can be of anything uh, the paper states that with that 5 or 8 uh, linearly independent rows we can express almost the similar performance which which is given by the thousand thousand dimensions okay so that's what is an example also which i have provided here thousand dimension can be expressed in terms of 10 linearly independent rows okay so that is the key hypothesis a key inspiration and hypothesis uh, which has been uh, taken in this paper so basically laura 
what does LoRa do? Okay, LoRa, what it allows is that it will train some dense layers. Okay, but it will be in an indirect way where it will be optimizing the rank decomposition matrices of that dense layer. Okay, so uh, that's what LoRa does. We'll be injecting some rank decomposition matrix, uh, and we'll be optimizing those by which indirectly the, the dense layers also will be automatically trained. Okay, that's what is being stated there. Now, coming to the advantages of the LoRa, LoRa technique. Okay, so the first one was uh, efficiently train multiple tasks by switching decomposition matrices. So what it states is that, let's say if you have, uh, again, we are seeing GPT-3, right? We'll consider GPT-3 itself as our example. So if you have GPT-3, uh, and we need to find unit for, let's say, um, summarization, translation, and etc, etc, etc tasks, okay? So, if I want to fine tune it uh, for every different task, I need to again, again, update different, different models. Eh? Like, you know, we'll see V1 for uh, summarization, V1 for translation. We'll be having separate GPT-3 models for all of the tasks, all of the tasks, right? But here, what you can do is you can just have some LoRa modules being inserted, okay, which is your weight decomposition matrices. And you can just train those modules alone for each task. So how is it? Uh, let's say you have GPT-3, right? Uh, your GPT-3 is the center base model. And followed by that, you'll be having uh, a module for LoRa, uh, a LoRa module for translation, summarization, and let's say another task is code generation, okay? So you will have separate three modules. Whenever you have a specific task, you can just attach it. Sounds cool, right? Like you, you can just switch your modules. Uh, let's say if you are having translation, you can just remove this uh, summarization module and then you can just add uh, your translation module uh, with the same GPT-3 model, which means you need not have uh like you know large number of gpt3 models and these modules guys it, we'll be seeing it in a section like you know the size reduction it will just be uh amazing okay the size reduction um so the switching between modules is very easy so you can just uh have a common base model and then you can just uh have some modules uh specific for each task so that is what is advantage number one and the advantage number two is that it, uh, the paper claims that the hardware barrier is lowered by three times. Okay. And why is it? Is that uh, usually we calculate gradients, right? Like, uh, well, back propagation will calculate gradients. So since it is frozen here, the pretrained model is frozen, right? We'll be calculating the uh, gradients only for the injected matrices. And that is very less in number. So it reduces the hardware barrier. Okay, and the number three advantage is that uh, they have provided a simple linear design. Okay, this is allowing them to merge the trainable matrices with the frozen weights. Okay, by this, what happens is that there is no additional inference latency like we have seen before. Okay, so the fourth advantage is that um, LoRa, uh, which is an adapter method can also be combined with some previous adapter methods like uh, prefix tuning, okay? That is uh, an another method, okay? Previous method. So these are some advantages of LoRa. Now, coming to the problem statement, which is being addressed, okay? We have seen the problem statement, obviously, but we'll see this in a detailed manner now. So let's say we are given a pre-trained model called P5 uh of y uh conditional y by x okay uh which is parameterized by phi okay while fine tuning what will happen is that uh for different tasks uh we'll be having context pairs right like xi yi uh which is stated that like you know let's say you'll have x as input and y as output right it will be multiple so one to n so here xi and y i is your sequence of tokens. So this is how your statement frames up. So you are having a model, uh, pre-trained language model called P5 
uh, with this uh, with a conditional ones by uh, y by x okay and it is parameterized by phi okay during full fine tuning what it happens is that uh, the pre trained weights will be updated as follow so like you know phi 0 by plus sorry phi 0 plus del phi okay so this is how it will be updated phi 0 is your pre trained force and weights and del phi is your weight updation okay so we can also see it as phi t okay the timestamp t is equal to phi 0 plus phi uh, del phi okay so the main drawback here is that uh, the dimension of the fine tuning is same as pre trained okay so here the modulus indicates about dimension so the modulus of del phi is equal to modulus of uh, phi 0 okay or else phi naught we can also say as phi naught okay here uh, for this problem statement they considered a solution okay with a parameter efficient approach in consideration they uh, rephrased the equation as del phi is equal to del phi of theta okay so here the theta in this equation is representing a smaller set of params okay and if you see the dimension of this theta is very very less than uh, del phi which can be almost as small as 0.01 percent okay let's say if you have 10,000 and uh, 10 percent will be 1,000 1 percent will be 100 which means 0.0 percent .0 can be 10 okay with 10 params you can just have the similar performance of 10,000 that's what uh, they are doing here I hope my calculation is right okay so uh, that is what being uh, stated here okay so with a smaller set of params uh, you can just optimize the trainable params now which is your theta it is not phi now okay del phi uh, phi theta, phi naught okay it's not phi naught here now it is theta and this theta like i said will be uh, as small as 0.01 percent so coming to the problems which are there in the solution uh which is being addressed okay uh first like i said adapter layers inference latency okay so i'll just uh, give a detailed explanation of why this latency was there so there were different types of adapters okay they were having two adapters per block and one adapter per block they experimented different ways okay but this extra computation uh was an issue they weren't able to bypass it then okay so usually what happens is that large neural networks expects parallelism model parallelism right so that's why we get the computation slightly faster but usually adapters uh were expecting it to be processed sequential so in a sequence in computing scenario okay uh where we won't have any parallelism in gpt uh they were able to notice uh a quite a bit latency okay significant uh, latency was there so that was problem number one the second problem was is to uh, directly optimizing the prompt is hard what uh, this section says that is uh, some of the previous adapter techniques uh, were just focusing directly on computation aspects okay let's say uh, fine tuning is one of those method where what they do is uh, a part of the sequence length alone will be reserved for adaptation let's say you have uh, 256 and they will be just uh, reserving some 200 okay by this you are uh, reducing the sequence length but as weird as it sounds like you know here the performance uh, like uh, isn't as expected okay uh, that's true if you reduce the sequence length by reserving it obviously the performance is going to uh, degrade right so that is so obvious so these were some key problems uh, which were there in that existing solution of adapters so now uh, lora method came into the picture at that time okay so this is a clear uh, diagram of lora architecture 
So first on left, we have the full fine tuning approach where let's say you have X as input, right? So it is of dimension D by K. Sorry, I didn't specify K. It is D by K, right? K will be your uh, co column so rows. Yes. Okay. So it will be D by K. Okay. So this D by K input uh, X is being provided to the pre-trained weights. Okay. As well as uh, during weight updation. So you can say uh, it updates directly, right? The weights are getting updated. But if you see the weight updation formula, it will be weight new is equal to weight old plus del W. Weight old is nothing but your pretend weights and del W is your weight updation. Right? So we are just having it as separate components here. So here you will get the weight old from your pretend weights and del W from your weight update. But the dimension of the weight update will be same as pretend weights. So let's say you are having D by K as dimension as 100 by 500. Okay, so your total params will be 100 cross 500, which is equal to 50,000. Okay, so, but while in case of LoRa fine tuning, again, you'll be having the same input, but here you can see, right, there is A and B. Those are your rank decomposition matrices. Weight rank decomposition matrices. Okay, so uh, just uh, leave the conventions which is inside that uh, trapezium structure, right? Which is your matrices. Uh, just leave that for now. I'll be explaining that uh, in some next slides. But what happens is that you are seeing an R, right? That is your rank. Okay, let's say your rank is four. Okay, so the dimension will of A matrices will be, A matrix will be D is hundred, right? So hundred cross four, and B matrix will be uh, R star K R xk which is uh, 4 cross 500 so what the total params will be is that just a minute i'll just hide my video so it will be 100 cross 4 plus 4 cross 500 which will be around 2400 not uh, even uh, like you know it, it's so less right uh, not even 10 percent okay uh, that that's how uh, good is LoRa. Okay, so that is uh, LoRa architecture. You will be passing through those rank decomposition matrices, uh, matrices, and it will update the weights. So here, del W will become as W A dot W B dot product. Okay, so that's how the weight will be updated while in case of LoRa. Okay, so now uh, just giving. A detailed explanation again about weight decomposition matrices. Let's say you have a dimension of thousand. You can just express that in ten uh, linearly independent row combined as a matrix. Matrix that is your rank matrix. Okay. So rank, uh, you know, right? Like uh, we have seen in our higher studies, rank just means that linearly independent. Okay. So in LoRa method itself, they have covered two subsections and we'll go in the same way. So the first section was about metric mat matrix updation. Okay. So from the hypothesis, we can represent the mate weight matrix as W naught is equal to, sorry, W naught belongs to real numbers of dimension D cross K. Okay. So the weight updation can be uh, done in the way we have said previously right w new is equal to w old plus del w this is how it has been happened okay but from the architecture we have seen that we can update del w by w a dot w b okay so here a belongs to uh, again a real number set which is of dimension d cross r and b r cross k okay and here r is your intrinsic rank or else we can also say it as lower rank okay so this is how the uh, uh, formula shapes up. Like you can just say it as W new is equal to W old plus W A dot W B. Okay. So by this, 
during fine tuning oh, in this architecture what will happen is w is not is frozen so there is no gradient updation for those params in the pre-trained model okay only those decomposition matrices which we injected right like a and b that alone has a trainable parameters which we'll update during the fine tuning methods okay i hope this makes sense uh considering just a normal forward pass with input uh, uh as h is equal to w not x okay so it will be written as like you know h is, h not is equal to w not x plus b a x since your weight updation uh, del w x is now represented as b a x okay now so usually uh, we'll have some pre-trained weights and we'll be updating it, right? But here we are just injecting some matrices. We need to initialize the weights, right? So initially they considered that del W will be equal to zero, okay? And how it happened was for A, they did a Gaussian initialization, okay? Which is of uh, normalized range zero comma sigma square and uh, B will be a zero initialization. Okay, so this is how they initialize the matri uh, matrices. So that's why I said just leave this uh, conventions inside the trapezium, which is your rank decomposition matrix, right? Uh, it is written there also. A is equal to n of 0, comma sigma square and B is equal to 0. That is just to say how is your matrices initialized. Okay, so this is how they initialize these weight matrices. Okay. Uh, Initialize the weight for these matrices. Sorry, my bad, my bad. So now we need to scale these weight updation. Okay, so they found a way to scale this weight updation, uh, which is del w x is equal to b x. Okay, so how they updated the weight was by using uh, the following component, which is alpha by r. Okay, so alpha here is uh, called lora alpha and that is a constant in r uh, if you have seen our previous video like chatbot and all uh, i've shown you right like about alpha how it impacts it will be generally like you know uh, if you write it in a convention it will be x uh, at because your matrix uh, transfer matrix multiplication can be done with at in pytorch at wa at wb star alpha so this is how your uh, uh, updation is scaled. Yeah, updation is scaled. Uh, so when you are optimizing it with Adam, right? Like when you are performing this fine tuning with Adam, this uh, Lara alpha will be almost similar to learning rate. Okay, so that is being stated in the paper. So another thing which they have claimed is that unlike the previous adapter model okay where it converges to a mlp what uh, why so like i said right like you'll have a pre-trained weight and followed by that you'll insert some layers and you'll be converging those layers along so the convergence happens only for that mlp but here they say that lora converges to the original training model okay so let's say you have uh gpt3 right it will be converging to those params of uh, not params to th that uh, GPT-3 pretend model. Okay, so that is what is being stated in this section. Okay, so now they have also told about how to implement this LoRa method on transformer or how they implement it. So in their study, it was they just limited uh, to the adaptation only on attention weights because attention is the core of your transformer right so they limited their uh, lora implementation only to those attention weights but uh, recently i've seen somewhere that we can also uh, do this lora adaptation on linear uh, layers which is your dense layers okay so uh, let me see and i'll let you know in maybe in some later videos okay so the, they limited the study only to the attention weights, okay, for these downstream tasks where they frozen, they froze all the MLP modules, which is your linear layers or dense layers, uh, 
for the sole reason of parameter efficiency and simplicity to have some efficiency in parameter and to make it very simple architecturally uh, they limited only to attention weights so attention weights will be wq wk wv and even wo okay so wq and tuple of wk comma wv all were considered as a single matrix that's how they considered it and usually if you see when we are adapting it right when we are fine tuning it we'll be considering only wq and w which is query and value for our adaptation okay we'll be considering only those uh matrices for our attention weights rather yes uh, those weights alone for our uh, fine tuning okay so what are the practical benefits of lora like i said i told you right we'll be seeing about the size reduction so the size reduction which is your memory reduction is uh, one of the most significant uh, usage of lora okay like you know uh, that is the significant most significant advantage because like you know it reduces the computation and memory storage drastically okay so let's say you have uh, hyperparameters like this okay uh, r is equal to 4 which is your lora rank is equal to 4 and target module is query and value okay so the original uh gpt3 was around 1.2 tb and this lora module which uh, obviously gave on par uh, performance with the pre trained model uh, sorry the fully fine tuned model was only 35 mb okay so <laughs> uh, that is so good right like you can just have your pre trained model and just have some models of 35 mb and just like you know switch it that will be your second advantage so how this uh, happened like you know from 1.2 tb to 35 mb okay so what happened was uh, we froze the parameters right so uh, with frozen parameters the optimized state optimized state won't be stored okay so usually optimized state stores only for the trainable parameters and for frozen parameters excluding that now the size became 350 gb okay while implementing a uh, lora method with those uh, parameters is specified right? where r is equal to 4 and target modules is query and value the size reduced from 350 gb to 35 mb which was 10000 x lesser okay that is so huge right that, that's what i said like it will be very amazing uh, when we use lora that's how uh, we have done all our projects right we have used some big models like la you might see like flantif large is not a very big llm which we used in our chatbot but you see it has also given some great performances and it is of size 3 gb it's not so less but we have loaded loaded it and fine tuned it uh, with around batch size 12 in google collab itself which is having just 15 gigs of ram if i'm not wrong uh, 15 gigs of uh, gpu vram okay that's that's quite good okay so we were able to achieve that because of lora okay because it reduced the params again so while we are doing task switching and uh, for for saying that uh, like you know that adapter module if i'm not wrong was around 9 mb okay uh, we fine tuned it for chatbot right like if you see in the repo you saved you can see like it will be around 9 or 10 mb if i'm not wrong okay so another key benefit is task switching like i said you can just swap it when you are having different task okay now we are having another key section called understanding the low rank updates okay so you need to have a uh, a clear idea right like what is the low uh, matrix we need to use like you know for which weights which is basically your uh, linear layers you have attention weights right from which weight matrix is and all you need to do uh, this lora right so from uh, the table which is there okay i've taken obviously this from the research paper okay so here you can see that uh, the weight type this your weight matrices they have taken wq wk wv wo wo is linear layers okay and qkv is for query key value respectively and combining query and key query and value and followed by that they combined all the weights okay so this is how they considered it 
and as far as rank is concerned uh, for a single matrix they took 8 and for combination of 2 they took 4 and a combination of 4 they took 2 okay so this is how they uh, set it up like, like the experiments were set up okay so you can see right like the performance uh, when you're having uh, just ignore all the four like you know you didn't get uh, as great performance as uh, wq and wv so <clears throat> but you can also see uh, you have wo which is a linear layer which is almost as similar as wq comma wv but it is very heavy okay so the computation is very heavy that's why they didn't consider that so see here with wq and wv you are getting 73.7 .7 as your metric and combining all the four also you got the same and uh, this is on wiki sql data and with multi nli data it was not that different okay you, know, you had 91.3 with uh, query and value and 91.7 with all those combined point four uh, that is not so big right so what uh the table says that we can just achieve competitive performance just focusing on wq and wv which answers the question that the matrices to be applied are wq and wv <coughs> okay i hope this makes sense and guys if you have any doubts in this paper uh in my explanation of this paper or else any general doubt also you can just come and uh, ask in the telegram group okay uh, i'll give that in the description okay so you can join the group and you can also find my profile there and you can also personally ping me if you have any uh queries you want to ask personally okay so now coming on to uh the optimal uh rank for lora okay so again they made a different experimentation now <coughs> uh like you know you can see the table is almost similar the well the performance case uh the metrics which you see it is almost similar to the previous one but what they done was they now had the weight types as wq wqv and all those combined for both the data set and they had different ranks okay r is equal to one two four and eight we are now focusing on wq and wv alone because we have seen previously right we need to apply only for wq and wv so let's ignore all those for rank is equal to one in wiki sql data set we have 73.4 and two we have 73.3 and for four we have a significant improvement to 73.7 and to eight we have 73.8 but when you go for a large rank like such as 64 the performance got degraded like you know you got 73.5 which means you should not have large ranks that is <coughs> an important point to note and while in case of multi nli uh, we can see a similar pattern right like you know we are having 91.3 91.4 and for four again it got slightly decreased here 91.3 but again for r is equal to eight it got increased the highest one which is 91.6 and for rank is equal to 64 what they achieved was 91.4 which again decreased so from this uh one is very clear like you know you can have rank four or eight that is which is uh that is the one which is giving good results and usually if you see we'll be giving eight or 16 and hereafter we might use four or eight from this research paper we know that right so now what shall we use four or eight that is another question it is based on your parameters budget because the rank is the one which is going to determine right like say you have the previous example okay we'll calculate that for both four and eight so for four we had 2400 let's say if you have hey eight which is 800 plus uh 4, 000, which is 4800 i mean yeah it's double right so still it is just 10 percent uh of the previous one okay and this is now five percent right with rank is equal to four and if you want to have a slight nudge you can try eight but if you are saying i don't have the params 
just you can give rank is equal to 4 and still you should get some good performance uh, that is point number 2 which is being given here so the optimal rank for LoRa it is based on your budget where you can use R is equal to 4 or 8 the trade-off uh, is in R budget okay so uh, that is the second one now for the third one where they try to understand how much this pre-train weights and the updation weights correlated for this they took uh, the query weights alone okay so what happened was uh, if you see they had some random weights as well, as well okay and they had the wq and similarly it was happening in uh, rank is equal to 64 okay why rank is equal to 64 uh, this actually is the point which shows that you should not use large ranks okay that we'll be seeing in some uh, points mentioned in there okay so with rank is equal to 4 you can see the random initialized metrics were having 0 0.02 and the original metrics were around 21.67 del wq was 0 0.32 by default okay so which this shows that like you know uh, it amplifies some features which is there in the model uh, pre-trained model right because uh, when you are having something random and you are initializing something and if it is correlating better with the original weights then you are doing something correct so that's what uh, they inferred from that test the second test was how much the amplification, like, you know, the importance of the features, uh, how much it was amplified. While in case of rank is equal to 4, uh, by dividing uh, 6.91 uh, by 0 0.32, which is the metric which we obtained previously, we got an amplification factor of 21.5. But with 64, it was way smaller. Okay, like, you know, uh, you can just make a calculation 3.57 by 0, 1.90, which will be not even 3 or 2 approximately, right? So, that is so less. So, with uh, rank is, with smaller matrices, the amplification, with lesser the rank, the amplification was larger. So, they concluded by this that W and del W correlates very well and also amplifies the important features for the downstream tasks okay so that is what is all about in this understanding of low, low, low rank updates where first we saw that we need to apply only for wq and wv okay next we saw that lora rank can be four or eight based on our budget and next we saw that with smaller rank we have uh, the important amplification factor higher than larger ranks okay so now coming to the conclusions of the paper so lora is a proven method now which is a memory efficient strategy which also achieves comparable or better performance than a fully fine-tuned model that is an important point first okay and then the second one uh, are some of the features which we specified previously no additional inference latency swappable modules okay so these were some other features of lora okay so and unlike uh previous adaptive methods it did converge very well right so by this we can say that lora is a very good technique for you to efficiently use your memory and fine-tune your model okay so that is the paper okay now i'll show you uh we have discussed in slide right like like now i'll show you the paper as well and i'll provide you the link uh provide you the link in description you can also check it out once you watch the video you'll have a good hang of what is there in the paper and once you again skim through the paper you'll get a clear understanding okay now i'll show you the paper and then after that i'll show you the implementation as well so yeah guys this is the paper like you see it was slightly an older paper okay this was from microsoft okay and uh, kudos to them for creating such an amazing paper 
and uh, here you can see uh, we have our introduction section problem statement section uh, existing solutions problem okay and lora method we have covered everything but we didn't see about empirical experiments okay where they try to see like you know how lora was performing with different models like uh roberta diberta and uh, roberta diberta then we had gpt2 which is medium and large version they found it and finally they also scaled up this uh lora method for uh, gpt3 also okay and then they have some related work section and another understanding the low, low rank update section which we saw okay and uh, finally we have the conclusion okay so this is uh laura research paper for you guys and uh, if you find time you can just uh, go through the research paper okay i'll like i said give you the link in the description you can just check it out okay now i'll show you how to implement it uh if you haven't seen uh, the detailed implementation of lora you can just watch <clears throat> some of the videos like i've uh, shown you how to create a chatbot with flantify that was based on lora okay we fine-tuned llama 2 that was also based on lora right q lora and uh, q lora is based off lora okay lora on quantized suites so i'll also cover that research paper and some in some time okay because uh a model called guanaco uh of 33 billion variant had an amazing performance which was quantized actually though it was quantized it achieved almost uh top five top six llm performance okay so we'll be seeing about uh q lora and i also have some other research papers in pipeline which has very good potential or else had a very good impact by now okay we will uh, see a lot of research papers now we come in to the implementation okay so i'm not gonna cover the whole implementation i'm just gonna say how to convert your normal model into lora model okay so these are all this is the uh, main part where we convert the model into lora model right we were using pef library parameter efficient fine tuning okay so in this we had the lora config right here we had r is equal to 16 so guys i'd like to tell you that maybe you can just experiment this with rank is equal to 4 and see how much the performance variance varies okay so that is one thing you can try today okay or else whenever you watch the video so lora alpha is equal to 32 that is also some standard ones but we can also go as low as 16 okay so other than this we have target modules like we see right query and value that's what we discussed now that we done correct and we are doing a sequence to sequence language modeling since we use plantify as our model if we had models like gpt3 or llama2 and if you're wondering llama2 how to find unit i have also made a video on that please check it out and uh, for that we will be using cos llm okay but here we are having sequence to sequence llm and we are having lora dropout is equal to 0 0.1 and like you see here the trainable params is um, let us make a calculation guys uh, 17 8 9 10 7, 8, something. Oh, just a minute. Okay. So the trainable parameters is 0.59% it seems. <laughs> that is so low, right? Uh, we are having 0.59% of parameters. Not even 0. Uh, not even 1%. Sorry. See, 166 times. Not even 1%. Okay. So... Uh, that is uh, Laura for you guys. Okay, so with lesser than one percent of uh, parameters in the model, we were able to get good results. Like you know, we saw the chatbot, right? We had some great results in the chatbot. So yep, uh, that is the implementation of uh, Laura. Okay, so this is how you can implement. So 
so yep uh, that's it for this video guys so like i said this playlist will have a lot of research papers now on okay so i'm trying to cover on various aspects uh, there are a lot of interesting videos uh being loading okay so if you haven't subscribed to the channel please do subscribe and if you haven't liked the video do like the video which shows me that you like these kind of contents okay and if you have some opinions uh do let me know uh in the comment section i'm always uh happy to read some comments and learn the opinions okay and make myself better make better videos for you all okay so and importantly more importantly share it among with your friends and help me reach more people okay so because i'm trying to give some unique contents okay but uh, for more people to get benefited out of it i need your help so just uh, share it among with your friends who might be interested in this field okay so that was that's it for this video guys i'll see you all in the next video until then cheers